As every legendary Pokemon has been revealed to us in the slip a note to your friend under your desk type of Pokemon reveal, we'll be looking at all 10 of the new legendary Pokemon in the Crown Tundra and ranking them in order to see who makes it out as the best new legendary Pokemon in the Sword and Shield expansion. We'll be going over all the information we have with us and seeing which Pokemon's looks, capabilities, and descriptions can make them a special prize for us to see and getting them to that number one spot or be less appealing and poorly executed, falling to number 10. But with the time that has passed and more information being brought out, let's see how these new legendary Pokemon fare in another all 10 by ranking all the new legendary Pokemon in the Crown Tundra expansion. Also, before we begin, there's some new Pokemon that haven't been officially released yet, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then you can leave a tip of two nice likes and hit that watch later button while subscribing to come back later and really intake these picks. Number 10 In total, there's only 10 new legendary Pokemon, so being at the number 10 spot isn't the most irredeemable placement. But this Pokemon did still feel a little bit lacking to a lot of fans upon seeing it. Shadow Rider Calyrex takes that number 10 spot as the fusion form Really, it's just Calyrex riding the back of Spectreer, so the fusion element isn't really there, and the only thing that's changed is the cape on its back, which is a nice cape at least, but it did not manage to come anywhere close to the envisioned idea of what a Calyrex fusion form could be. The ranking for either of these forms for Calyrex is of course going to be based on preference to whichever horse you like better, and as I personally like the look of Glacier much more, I'd have to save that one for a later spot. The idea of a king riding a ghost horse into battle and summoning spirits to fight against any opposition in its conquering quest for silence and solitude is still a good look, and if it wasn't assumed that this would be a super fusion type of Pokemon, like we're used to with Kyurem, then I think it would have been a lot more liked, but it's still just one Pokemon that looks the same underneath another Pokemon that looks the same, but with a new cape. Number 9, Regilecki. I think the glow of Regilecki dropped a little bit over time, and while it wasn't the most hype Pokemon aside from it being in the group of Regis, and somewhat overshadowed by Reggie Draco, even though it's its own source of light, it still is a good Pokemon to see introduced, and if you're gonna bring in a new Reggie, at least give it a friend. That's why Regilecki may be placed low, but it's still a great Pokemon because everyone needs a friend. Its signature move is really fitting and cool to see it unleashed by Regilecki, and the electrical tentacle arm seen in the new Japanese Crown Tundra trailer makes me really excited to encounter it and capture it to see what other very vivid outward emotions it would like to showcase. Could have had a little more added to it, maybe a statue of an electric Pokemon in human form like Melmetal but currents of electricity, but I hope to see more added onto these two miniature Regis in later generations and hopefully stacking Regilecki up in a higher regard. Number 8, Ice Rider. The Calyrex Ice Rider form is a very hard Pokemon to place because I know the current salt is still there marinating with the fans about how it wasn't a half horse, half deer like a Frankenstein Zoo just opened up. Really gonna dissect this here. If and if Calyrex just wasn't a Pokemon on its own and it was this little deer on the back of these two horses and then you unlocked it later as its own Pokemon, then this will be a Pokemon that's ranked much higher up. If we took it as its own exclusive Pokemon like Shelder on Slowbro just being Slowbro, the look of Calyrex riding Glacier looks really good and is one I really do like and would be like a number 4.5. But that's also mostly because of the majestic look of the perfectly sculptured Ice Horse and the little leash added onto it with this deadpan looking deer on the back showing no emotion as my little pony giddies up and hops his two front feet into the air. So what I'm saying is the Rider portion of Ice Rider is like a 9.5 on this list, and the Ice is at a much higher number. But as it stands, the hope of a much better fusion form, and the unfortunate way of finding out how these two look when they combine, can be a bit more disappointing, and takes the majesty out back. Number 7, Galarian Articuno. Pretty sure I gave this the number one spot at a time, but you know our tastes change and through the evolution process of ourselves, our desires for new Pokemon can adapt. This is the part of the list where none of these Pokemon are bad, so really they can all be number one. It's just anything before number one is like a participation award. I do still like how much they decided to try and change with the new Articuno, and try to make it this dignified psychic bird. And maybe the laser eye beams were cool at first and sort of went a little tepid over time, but it left its signature and was still a change we wanted to see in regional forms, as opposed to say a deer just riding on its back. Number 6, Galarian Moltres. After I did some reflecting about Gigantamax Charizard and how it isn't actually that bad of a design, 
and I was actually mind game by the comments on how many forms Charizard has, I started to realize the blistering flames and heated disposition really does make it a great Pokemon. Which works with how Galarian Moltres looks. Maybe it was the newly shiny Galarian Moltres that put things into perspective, as you can see it in its original colors, blazing about and showing off the flames with such pride like a 1972 Chevy Impala with its somewhat working muffler that's letting out a little more than fumes but still well kept and intact like Galarian Moltres. I don't think I'd ever say that this is a fire hazard. Yeah, in a technical understanding of flames and hazard, it could be considered one, but it looks to have so much control there's no way it could burn down my apartment again. It's also the mood that's given off from the calm, grim-looking Canto Moltres that's transformed into this silly, happy-looking bird. That's brought it up in the ranks for me and takes a higher spot than what we placed it at in a different list before. Number 5. Calyrex Over time, the rabbit did grow on me. Its displeased demeanor and RBF somehow started getting to me and I'm not sure why. But the royal aspect and the way it's been integrated into the game on its own, not in its forms with the horses, and has what looks to be a deeper presence than the other legendaries in the first DLC, does make it feel like more of a main legendary Pokemon than a side quest one. If we create a category of story legendary Pokemon and picture book legendary Pokemon, Calyrex could be in the group of tales and stories, and Urshifu could be somewhere in the cat in the hat. The look of it funnily holding the leash around Glacier's neck, or staring into my soul on Ghost Horse, does make it feel like a better Pokemon than just the original image and the zoom in on its face that we started with. I'm just using the barely fused forms to display Calyrex on its own, and just ignoring that not very much has changed in these forms. As a Pokemon on its own, Calyrex looks to have a lot going for it, and hopefully it manages to disappoint me in ways that I couldn't even possibly envision as I play through its chapter in the Crown Tundra. Number 4 Regidrago. Still a hot and contested Pokemon for the round of who am I gonna like this month. The little paintball turning into a dragon head is probably the transformation for a form Pokemon we've been looking for. <coughs> Shadow Ice Rider. It is only an animation for it in battle, but it does open the door for the possibility of future generations using this Reggie to grow into something more. Yeah, sure, Reggie Leckie can tag along, but the little Dragon Reggie does have a plump, cute self with a floating head and unique design that'll age well over time. Number 3. Spectrier The idea of a ghost horse is more than likely something that I've already mentioned that I've wanted as a Pokemon in the games before. And if I didn't say it, I probably scrapped it in my recording or it was a fleeting thought while I was shopping. But what I'm saying is this is one of the Pokemon I've wanted. It is nice, would have honestly liked to see four legendary horses as their own group for a generation like the Tapus, but I'll take what I can get with the Shadow Horse here, riding into the sunset and finding silence and solitude, just like our ancestors during Woodstock. Again, I'm talking about this Pokemon on its own, as it's really exciting to see as it is. It does have that attitude of a legendary Pokemon, and horses have been a pretty good subject to make for this classification. A ghost-type horse Pokemon just works really well, and can make a wonderful backstory to be placed into the game about its creation. Let's just look at what its Pokedex entry says. It absorbs the life force of sleeping creatures and its kicks are said to separate the body from the soul. So we're just gonna ignore what I just said. You know Nightmare Horse from Yu-Gi-Oh? That's what I've wanted in this game. Maybe not necessarily exactly that eerie and with that amount of fabric, but Spectre really suits the idea in a more popularized design that combines the wonderful spirit of nature and the ghostly apparition of the typing into one beautiful Pokemon. Actually, I just realized Shadow Rider Calyrex is just the fusion form of Nightmare Horse. Number 2. Galarian Zapdos It's great to see a loved bird in a loved form that's well-loved in a loving manner. I love how they made Zapdos into a chocobo, and it'll definitely continue to be one of my favorite Pokemon introduced in this generation. It does the original Pokemon justice, as Zapdos on its own was already a great Pokemon, and seeing it turn into a different, on-two-feet Pokemon that runs and jumps all over the place was a pleasure to see, and I'm sure this is one of the Pokemon from this generation that'll stick with us all, even though it is a form for an already created Pokemon. It'll be one of the more remembered Pokemon in this category, and won't just be left as a Final Fantasy. Number 1. Glacier. It's the greatest horse ever. Yeah, maybe the other horse is the Shadow Horse, but this is definitely an upgraded Shadow Fax. The ice goes so well to complement the white horse look, and the art for even its being ridden form is just so good. It portrays this fierce, ready to tackle you horse like the pent up wrestler being handed the steel chair. It can ravage into battle, but with grace and a chill nature. The placement of the ice is so well chosen, its armored up feet, its dangling tail, 
and the spikes going down its head just make it one of my favorite Generation 8 Pokemon of all time. The only thing that could make Glacier better is if they went the way of Zacian and Zamazenta and could suit up. The typing might be bad for Glacier, but aesthetically, an armored suit would have these Pokemon shine like no others. Armored up horses look sick. I do still like the Ice Rider version of it, but seeing as that's an alternate form for Calyrex, I'm just using the way Glacier looks in it and how it acts to highlight how well made this Pokemon was and how great it will be to see in game in the Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra expansion.